All right. In this example, we are going to see for the first time out of three different examples what a two-step problem looks like. Because again, this is one of the problems that um, I mentioned in the lecture video, students often find the most difficult. And I want to make sure that we know how to handle these problems uh, in a way where it's not just trying to find something similar and plug in numbers, but so that we actually understand what's going on and why there are the two steps. So if we read through this situation, there's a pellet that hits a block, that's a collision, and then other stuff happens. The block slides to a stop. So step one here is going to be the collision. So step one is the collision, which means we need to use momentum conservation. So the only thing that we're worried about in step one is that we have the two kilogram block, we have the little mass moving, where M1 is 30 grams, so that's point zero three kilograms. You can double check for yourself if you need to do the full unit conversion. 30 grams divided by 1,000 grams per kilogram. That initial velocity of the pellet is 160 meters per second. The second mass is two kilograms. It's initially not moving at all. It's at rest. And then they stick together, which means that the V1 final is equal to V2 final. And so we can just call that whole thing V final, and that's what we're trying to find. We're trying to find the final velocity of the collision. So we use our um, collision um, tool, which is the momentum conservation equation. So we write it out. We've seen it before, M1 V1 initial plus M2 V2 initial equals M1 V1 final plus M2 V2 final. And then we can plug in numbers. So we have the 0 0.03 kilograms times 160 meters per second. We have the 2 kilograms times 0. Then we have the 0 0.03 V final plus 2 V final. Okay, on the left, we can plug that into our calculator. And what we get is 4.8. And on the right side, we have 0.03 V final plus 2 V final, which means we have 2.03 V final. We divide both sides by 2.03. And we get 2.36. So 2.36 meters per second after the collision. Okay. Now, if you need to pause the video um, to make sure that you've got all of this written down, totally understandable, because I'm gonna have to erase some of it to have enough space, and the one point that I wanna make is right now, what the situation looks like is we now have the pellet sticking into the block and it's moving at 2.36 meters per second. That becomes our before situation in chapter, not chapter, in step two. So the end of step one is the beginning of step two. It's the before in step two or the start of step two. That's gonna be true for every single two-step problem that we do, no matter which step is first, energy or momentum. Okay, so I have to erase some of this. 
So again, you can pause it or rewind if you need to see it. But now we're going to recognize that if step one was collision, and it's a situation where there's something hitting each other and then other things are happening, then it means that step two is the energy problem. So it's an energy balance. So I started it drawing it on the bottom, but we'll draw it again up here. We have it moving at 2.36 meters per second at the start. At the end, it stopped. And every single energy problem that we do has the same mass at the beginning and the end, which is another way for us to identify it's a two-step problem. We cannot just take the tiny pellet as our before and the whole system as our after in a single energy problem. Our energy problems never have the mass changing. Now for this one, this is our before situation. And when the block is stopped over here, it's our after situation. And normally we do a full, um, we do a full table of is there kinetic energy? Is there potential energy from gravity? Is there potential energy from springs? Is there a work term? And that's always worth thinking through. But one thing we can realize right away is there's no springs involved and there's no gravitational energy involved either. So we can write out our energy before. You see it's a new um, purple marker. Energy before plus work added equals energy after. And because we've already ruled out there being a gravity potential energy term, we don't worry about that one. We've already ruled out there being a spring term. We just have to worry about kinetic energy and the work added term. So the energy before is going to be one half the total mass. So I'm going to write M total because both of these things together, the 2 kilograms and the 0 0.03 kilograms, the total mass, I'll write it down here, M total is the 2.03 kilograms that we had to deal with in the first part. And then the V squared is that 2.36 uh, meters per second squared. Now work added here is negative friction force because the friction acts against the motion times the distance. And then the energy after here, if we stop moving, then we have no energy at the end of the problem. So we can kind of highlight where this came from. We can now plug in numbers into this um, circled equation where we have 1 half times 2.03 times 2.36 squared minus 5d equals 0. So we can add 5d to both sides, and now we can see that I'm going to have to erase the rest of what was left here. So to solve this, we can get the kinetic energy on our um, calculators. So we'll get 5.67, 5.67, and if we added 5d to both sides, then now we have a positive 5d over here. So we can divide both sides by 5, and we will get that our final distance, that it slid, is a little over 1 meter. It's 1.13 meters. As usual, it's nice and angled towards me, but that's okay. So the first step was how we got this 2.36 meters per second. This problem would not have been solvable if all we tried to do was just a single energy problem with the 160 meters per second um, initial speed. 
So we need to know how fast the total mass was moving after the collision, and then we could set up an energy balance problem. And we'll see what that looks like in the other two examples coming up. But the key thing is that there is no shortcut here. It takes two different steps, collision um, using momentum and energy using our energy balance. So make sure to compare this one with the next two examples to see the similarities and differences. And I'll see you in the next one.